If you look at the last few years, for example, every time we had a, a knockdown, instead of people stopping buying gold and silver, they bought more. So when it goes up, they buy more. When it goes down, they buy more physical. And I think the next time, if we do get a market crash, I think the paper silver versus physical silver um, gap will be wider even than it was in 2008 uh, because there's so much pressure that's going on right now to buy. So the, the mentality is changing, and that doesn't necessarily show in the charts, and it doesn't necessarily show in the fact that silver and gold keep getting knocked down. But the fact that they don't stay down, to me, is a tea leaf that we need to pay attention to. But then psychology, not really. I mean, I've read a couple of bank reports, I won't name the banks, but uh, they're of the opinion that, you know, with interest rates going higher, it's going to kill the gold and silver markets, which is anything but truth. Because the only way that you can get interest rates high enough to do anything to any market is to get a real yield. And if the official rate of inflation is eight, eight and a half percent in the U.S., means you need a nine percent yield to get a half a percent above inflation. And even the eight and a half percent is questionable if you look at the statistics from 1980. So, but it works in the short term. I mean, this big sell-off I read. Usually I read the news from a couple of feeds. And the big reason, reason that gold fell off so sharply was interest rates are going to go higher. So, And it will. I mean, they'll milk that. They, being the mainstream financial press, will milk that mean as much as they can. But it's temporary. Long term, uh, there's a, a, a small earthquake starting to rumble that will grow in intensity and power over time. And I think the banks are scared personally mm. by needing to put out that silver is not going to do anything this year mm. and uh, trying to convince people with their psychology that uh, it's not a good place to be. You should be, you know, you'd be better off somewhere else. Anything that's anything but true. David Morgan of the Morgan Report shares his thoughts on the silver price in 2022 as well as why he thinks the stock market will face more volatility. Speaking in the interview, David Morgan of the Morgan Report said he expects silver to perform better in 2022, breaking through the U.S. dollar 30 per ounce mark to trade in the U.S. dollar 33 range. I think that's quite a bit of it. Uh, derivatives are, you know, the, uh, the paper silver. And if people were aware that, you know, uh, forever you could buy American Silver Eagles for $3 over, you know, for the, the premium over spot. And now it's $10, $12, $13. So really, if you wanted to buy Silver Eagles today, you'd pay $35 an ounce. And so that's just mm -hmm. one element. There are so many things that are driving us toward, which I believe will be a historical breakout, and it'll be a one-time deal. It'll be, I, I would call it almost similar to the Palladium experience, where we'll see three, four, five hundred percent move upward. And at some point, that'll spike probably even higher and then come back into a much higher sideways range that trades there indefinitely. And when that finally takes place, I don't think we'll ever see silver in the mid-20s again. It's mm -hmm. incredible that it's the only metal that's trading for less than its 1980 uh, nominal price. Uh, when you look at lowly, iron is up 1,100 percent, lead's mm -hmm. up three or 400 percent. And here's silver, one of the most critical metals out there for us. And it's trading at less than half of where it was. So I'm a little frustrated like everybody else, but I'm not concerned because every time it gets knocked down, it bounces up again and it refuses to stay down where people on the other side want it to be. While that's a fairly muted forecast, he pointed out that higher levels are certainly possible, for example, if there is a black swan event. In fact, he noted that the Morgan Reports' David H. Smith is calling for U.S. dollar fifty silver this year. Once silver gets above US dollar 33 and it stays there for three or four days, or better yet, even two or three weeks, there's not much holding it back to hit US dollar 50 again, he explained. Well, any inflationary expectations, and I say the word expectations, should drive the metals. It certainly has through all of history. Is it different this time? I guess you could say it remains to be determined, but people go to this grocery store and they find that every time they go, it's higher cost then that psychology will get into them and they will start to buy in advance because they're expecting higher prices and their purchasing power to be decreased. So therefore they take the currency they have and spend it and uh, take it, you know, take 
what they can at the time. It's all explained very eloquently by Von Mises in the Crack Up Boom. And again, he goes to the word, I think he uses the word psychology. Once you get that idea that, uh uh-oh, no matter what happens in the future, I've got to buy it now because it's going to cost me more. So yes, it could have an effect. Will it? I think it's already having an effect throughout the food chain and that type of thing. Is it uh, Mm -hmm. built over into the precious metals? I'd say gold is pretty much indicating it has. Uh, The flow rates in the gold are significant. And just going back to Nick, you guys are both going to think it's a setup because I had the rig book sitting on my desk. This is Nick's book. Thanks for sending it, Nick. I don't know if you can see it on the screen. But it shows you over the last 20 years how gold outperformed the S&P and outperformed the bond market. So I've actually used that a few times on my interviews and, of course, in my private work that you know, gold's basically done its job. And going a step further, the question you asked Nick if I could follow up because he's the one that did it, but he paid for the Ibbotson study on what's the perfect portfolio, portfolio theory, we'll call it. And I forget the exact number, Nick, I think it was 15.7% gold in all conditions, inflation, deflation, stagflation, whatever. So, And even Jeffrey Christian uh, did a study on his own for CPM Group and looked at 1968 until I think 2021 or 2020. And actually in his study, it was a 25% weight of gold. But you'll never hear that in Wall Street. Uh, it just it just will never happen. So that's, that's my answer. I'd push back on a little bit, Nick, on that. Uh, I think at their really high level net worth people, they do it in a whisper manner, but they certainly don't do it for the public. And uh, it's certainly a, a secret and I'm, only doing that from personal experience. In fact, I'll just go one step further. There was someone that just got to me in the last couple of days and their fund manager, their professional told them, oh, well, you're only worth a few million dollars. You don't need gold. It's only people like me that have, you know, pushing toward the half billionaire class that needs gold. You peons don't need gold. It was basically the gist of it. So uh, I'm not really pushing back hard on you, Nick. I just think that some of the smartest people probably have gold, but they just keep their mouth shut. But you're never- and on, on that point, I, I agree with you, David. And I was talking about the difference in institutions like high net worth investment, family offices. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they understand the, the process. Morgan also spoke about silver supply and demand, noting that while supply hasn't moved much over the last five years or so, investors should be keeping an eye on demand, especially on the industrial side. I, de- I definitely think it can change. And in support of what Stuart just said, something, a nuance to the, uh, I think it was the BIS international settlements that had turned gold into a tier one, uh, good as cash in terms of central bank holdings. What I did not understand until fairly recently is that when they hold paper derivatives of gold, they are now required, and somebody can contradict me if I have the percentages wrong, but they're required to hold 70 or 80% of that as gold backing that paper derivatives, not just having the derivatives out there on their own, like has been traditionally. So it, it's, it's to their best interest to hold more physical gold when you have to have almost as much as if you're backing paper gold. And that's just one element. But I think there are so many things that are set to uh, make this different than we've ever seen before. And we don't know what element will, will be that straw that breaks the camel's back. It may be something that is completely unrelated to the elements that we all know that could bring about a massive gold and silver price rise. It could jump lanes uh, to a contagion that Jim Rickard talks about, something completely unrelated to gold and silver that bleeds out into that lane and suddenly it is related. Looking at the broader market, Morgan said he sees volatility ahead. There is going to be huge distortions across all markets, meaning the bond market, the stock market, the metals market. The crypto market, he said, adding that he's been saying for a long time that the stock market is overvalued. Absolutely. I mean, I think it was, uh, you know, par excellence uh, look from a visual as far as how the whole system is structured. I mean, a pyramid is the most stable structure on the planet. So that would imply an upside down pyramid is the least stable. And as the liquidity crisis unfolds further, which we're already seeing it, you will see uh, a run to gold. And before you see a run to gold, you see a run to cash. 
And that's why I've said over and over that the U.S. dollar will probably look very good until it doesn't. The only way to go from dollars to gold at the end is that there's mistrust in the dollar. And we touched on that at the first question you gave me, and that was the psychology. It's when I think that dollar isn't going to buy me what I want two months from now, I'm going to buy something with it. And anybody that has savings of any type anywhere in the world will say, I need to do something. Those that are just barely making it paycheck to paycheck, they're going to buy extra food. For the people that have savings, they're going to not want to keep it in the bank for reasons like Nick outlined with Trudeau, but other reasons being, I don't know what it's going to be worth now, but if I buy metals, I am probably going to be in better shape. So I think the run to gold, as I said earlier, has started. It has not spilled over into silver yet, but the uh, Silver Institute just put out the new silver survey for 2022. And the title of the press release that went along with the release of the silver survey was 2021 was a record uh, demand for silver. The retail demand in silver was up 36% last year. And uh, last year it was uh, 200 million ounces in the retail market. So the demand is obviously there. And so then someone will ask me, well, where's, you know, so what's, the driver. The driver in 2020 was primarily the ETFs, and the ETF demand in 2021 was not nearly what it was in 2020. So there's part of the answer. I do not see a robust economy. I really don't. I see the stock market really catching up with reality. And the reality is we've been deteriorating on a global basis for quite some time. And I think the stock market is going to reflect that, he said, noting that this isn't necessarily as negative as it sounds. Is it the end of the world? No. Is it doom and gloom? You can call it that. I'm calling it reality. All things cycle up and down. 